Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Well, Angel and I are out again for another walk <laughs> and uh, we're going in um, more of a mixed uh, conifer stand here with a lot of cedar and uh, some balsam and uh, yeah, uh, not as much sun, right? So we got different plants. Uh, Mayflower, Lily of the Valley, I think. <laughs> Here, Angel, could you get out of the way, please? Angel, move, move away. I gotta film the flowers. So we got a landslate leaf with what I call is a bum crack at the end. Okay. Again, they haven't flowered yet. A little tiny flower. The stems up. But it carpets the forest floor uh, around where all the moss is growing in a very damp and shady place, which is underneath these, uh, actually these, these are spruce and balsam. Cool. What do you think, Angel? Well, I'm, I'm loving these walks, Kevin. I'm loving these walks. I don't really care what these flowers are. Just when's lunch? <laughs> I have a good time actually doing these walks. Still the bugs aren't out yet, so fantastic. Awesome. I'm only like 20 minutes north of my house, but what a huge difference. If I go 20 minutes south of my house, a lot more flowers are blooming. Very shady wooded area here though. Totally different habitat, which is cool. Okay, we got another one. I was wondering if I was gonna find this one around here. Large flowered bellwort. It's actually in the lily family, I believe, um, but yeah. Really common in the spring, especially this time of year. So it's got a dangling yellow flower. That's the prominent feature of it. It dangles and lancelite leaves. And I don't know much about it to be quite honest. I just know what it is. Well, looks like something's trying to pollinate. <laughs> cool. Let's see what happens here. It's gonna crawl in there. Is it? It is, look at that. Yeah, that's how pollination happens. So he's going in there, getting some nutrients. He's gonna come out with pollen on him. And then cross pollinate on another flower. We just ran in some to some hikers and uh, you know, Angel's a lot better off the leash. She's a half border collie, but because of COVID and because of rules here, I'm keeping her on the leash. And they they seem like really nice dog owners, but they didn't keep their dog off the leash, and I just don't want them and their dogs around me. It's COVID. <laughs> like, put your dog on the leash. Yeah, you can make it run for a while, but if you see people, put it on the leash. This is different times. Well, mixed in with all the wild clover right here, we have some wild strawberry. They haven't flowered it, and there's no berry on it yet, but that is wild strawberry. Three leaves, serrated, especially at the tip. Really low lying. And yeah, later on in the summer, you'll get some little tiny strawberries from them. So this place is just covered in reindeer moss. It's very limestone base, um, uh, really dry soil, um, shallow soil all around here. And this stuff gets really spongy, um, soft when it's wet, but really dry and brittle when it's dry. Okay, it's not a spring flowering plant, but I just thought I'd, I'd show you. So see how dry and brittle it is? They make a really good fire started right now, but then when it gets wet, it's just like a, almost like a spongy diaper. 
Not as much as sphagnum moss, but yeah. Cool plant. I live south of Algonquin Park and north of Toronto. So uh, this is the only place I know where this stuff grows around here. Okay, now that we're into the forest more, it's uh, more shady, more cool, more damp, and no reindeer moss. Um, because of the habitat, it's not open and sunny, we have sphagnum moss. So there you go. Even when this is dry, I mean, this is it's quite a dry day, it's actually um, very soft. And the First Nations people used to use this for their, their diapers. And it makes really good toilet paper, by the way, <laughs> if you don't have any. See how this entire forest floor is covered in sphagnum moss and Canadian mayflower. Okay, we're out of the conifer forest and into the deciduous forest now. Lots more stuff coming up. Salmon seal, false salmon seal. So what a difference it makes when there's no leaves on the trees yet. From going into a coniferous forest where it's evergreen to actually uh, where the broadleaf broad, broad, broad uh, leaves aren't out yet. Look at this. I hope I caught that on camera. That was some raptor that just flew in front of me. You cut, I just caught a glimpse of it. Hope I got that on camera. It looked like a red-tailed hawk, but he wouldn't be here. Be more like a Cooper's. But he's too big. I wonder what he was. Okay, let's go find out. You hear that? It's a blue jay calling. And he's yeah, there you go. So that blue jay is telling everybody that that hawk is in that area. They're the guardians of the forest. And sometimes they'll mimic the call just to bug the raptor. So I'm guessing that's not a red-tailed hawk because that, the blue jays love mim mimicking red-tailed hawks right above their heads. And they're not doing that. They're just calling out to everybody. Chickadees are doing the same thing. That's their, their, their call. Um, the more they... Uh, They'll go chick dee 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 and the more stronger they do it, the more they're telling everybody uh, in the forest that uh, there's a predator around. Blue jays, chickadees. Yeah, they do the same thing when bad weather's coming. So that's kind of cool. And the black flies are coming out now. <laughs> okay, I figured it out. Here's a great horn owl. <laughs> During the day, I must have spooked it. Um, whether it was nesting or not, they're the first to nest. They, they, they start nesting the end of February, mid-March. So I guess they would have their young in the nest. But yeah, that's what was going on. That's why it was really quiet when it flew away too. Uh, owls have comb-shaped uh, feathers. So basically you just don't hear them um, flapping uh, when they're flying and soaring. Yeah, good habitat for it. Makes sense more than a red tail. Just kind of odd to see it during the day. And um, yeah, the, the blue jays and the chickadees were not liking it. So I followed where they were calling. And I didn't get a shot of it, sorry. That was cool. Well, I just flushed another <laughs> bird of prey and uh, I'm pretty darn sure uh, I sorry I didn't film it I <laughs> they're way too quick and I got the little camera here today well it doesn't matter it was way too quick um, what are you doing dog you all right the dog wants to have lunch but yeah I pretty sure that was a female goshawk actually pretty darn sure it was a female goshawk and this is a perfect habitat for it they're very solitary birds though and they're not they're very rare to see and they're more northern than I thought, but yeah, pretty sure that's what that was. And I, I put him off or her off the nest as well. Yeah. <laughs> Even though this is supposed to be a wildflower uh, walk, I'm looking at mosses and birds of prey as well. Bonus track. <laughs> All right, let's have lunch, dog. I think I found a little lunch spot.
Well, <laughs> I'm glad I brought this today. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite uh, bug repellent, by the way. It's got DEET in it, which works, by the way. That's why I use it. <laughs> and um, it's water-based, not alcohol-based. So you don't smell like bug dope all day. And uh, yeah, I prefer it. And uh, yeah, they're biting now. <laughs> they're not bad. I'm just glad I didn't leave home without this. And when the bugs get really bad, especially uh, the black flies, I tend to leave Angel at home. I'm just gonna get eaten alive. I do have a formula uh, that I put on her. Um, it's got cinnamon and nutmeg in it, basically. And that kind of helps, but no, she gets eaten alive uh, when the black flies really come out. So, so yeah, maybe next time I'll just go on my own. She loves it out here, look at this. And yeah, she's not getting the leash thing. I mean, usually I would let her run wild here. This is a, a place I rarely see anybody, to be quite honest. It's a long trail. It takes all day to do it, which is fine. Um, but yeah, it's just that there's a lot more people out walking, especially during the week, which, you know, because um, of COVID, they, they don't have jobs and stuff like that, and, and they have to get out and, and get exercise. So yeah, she's on the leash all the time now, uh, just to, re to respect other people and other dogs. All right, time to move on. <laughs>